Hello Divine Feminine. Today I'm going to be doing a reading that is what, what movement can we expect from the Divine Feminine, uh, Divine Masculine. Woo -woo. I hope you're all doing well. He's not feeling particularly empowered right now. Hmm. I don't know, I, I think he's recognizing that he hasn't been giving the way that he should have been giving and he wants to move in that direction. So right off the bat, I see he wants to talk. It's not necessarily about emotions. Do I think you want to talk about that? That's kind of a crazy uh, run of cards right there. Wow. <coughs> so he has been very quiet. And even if you guys have been talking, it may be that, oh my God. He has been going inward. Look at thinking about that give and take. Thinking about his empress. Thinking about how can he six six nine three three six six nine. I haven't seen a, this many inner directed cards in a while. Okay, and we have three of pentacles on. Two, two, nine, nine, five, three. So, your masculine has not, he has been going on an inner journey. Something with you. It's like the way you love. It's not what you do. It's like who you are and just being in your energy field is incredibly powerful, transformative. I mean, look at this two cards. It's like, I'm not gonna overhype it, but I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> this just fell out. This is my Empress card with the Queen of Swords in reverse. I mean, right here, right now, when I'm asking, you're at the center of it. You're at the center of his. They're saying pivot. Sun on the bottom of the deck. I know he really ignored so much. It's like he chose he was conditioned to choose the negative. And he woke up to that. Like he woke up to this fact that he's been basing like all of his forward progress on the pain that happened in the past. He wants to redo it. Why am I getting that message? Because I do not see him at this time in these cards wanting to build a stable relationship. Let's see where you are. Badger spirit, be fearless and bold. Beautiful, that's for you, four. Cat spirit, claim your independence. I, that's a four card too. 13, which is the death card. And then in between is Hawk Spirit, let Spirit be your guide. And Snake Spirit, time to heal, five, five. So really strong spiritual rebirth here. And for me, the High Priestess with the Queen of Cups, it is a very spiritual rebirth in a lot of ways. It's kind of like grounding the ethereal, the spiritual past life truths 
that have been uncovered here, you know, you brought this different way of being into his sphere, right? We have the sun and the moon here and a rainbow um, and a storm. And it's kind of like um, spiritual truths. He went from being very inflexible and very rigid to this kind of open flowing spiritual feeling. And I feel like this, all of this stuff over here is the, the root chakra and the sacral, which is being brought up in a lot of readings right now. <clears throat> And in many ways, it's like when we revisit who we were taught to be as a child, and we see through that illusion of love, right? I've been talking about that for so long. It's like who we had to be to give, to get the love of our parents, to get the love of our caretaker and how that kind of shaped us to be in our life I feel like that all kind of came up I mean you're on his mind the most there's a card in one of my decks that says that and that's what's So he wants the cancer and the rabbit came off, standoff, empress energy, you see through my mask. Exactly. Okay. So he is attempting to take his energy field and like align it more to you. And I want to say it's like that's not a mask. It's like, to do this, he has to take the mask off. Because the mask keeps everything in place, right? And then when you see, when you see the truth and it's eliminated to you, you... you start to love yourself and you don't want to wear the mask anymore and you don't care. It's like with a mask, I'm not sure why they're going into so much of this, but with a mask, you can't be yourself. You can't express your emotions, right? You have to hide them because you're afraid that you won't be accepted and you came in and just accepted everything and gave love that he pushed away or denied or whatever happened. And it's like, you know, searching through a desert for a spring of water. Um, and you find it, but the mask won't let you drink from the water, right? The water's there trying to give itself to you, but you're like actually prohibiting yourself from taking it in. But it doesn't matter. It's like just knowing the water exists changes everything. It changes the way that you see the world. Um, and you're like, why, why am I trying to survive in a desert when there's a spring of water there <clears throat> and I can simply remove all this pain I've been living in for so long 
and then accept it and accept this beautiful love. But the love is scary because, of course, there's always a fear of well, what if it goes away and then I, I enjoyed the feeling of it and then I can't have it anymore. There is some of that here. I'm still healing wounds from a past relationship. I don't want to lose you. I'm not ready for commitment. I keep seeing these signs of you. Scared of change. See myself having kids with you. That's that energy. It's like I see myself, my future. I want to include you in it. I can see myself building with you something greater than us because you're so solid and it's not even you're so solid it's um you're so abundant that you have enough and in here it's emotional for some reason that's what is going on I send you telepathic messages. I want to come back home to you, you're where I belong. And that word home has come, coming up a lot. So I'm going to get two more signifier cards and see what you guys are dealing with here. There was something else that they wanted me to talk about. Um, if you haven't like heard or seen them, like there's been a kind of a blockade or whatever, like they blocked you. <laughs> um, They are kind of wanting to surprise you with a bit of a transformation. It's funny because they're saying in some cases that there's been something for such a long time that they just thought you really had forgot about them and moved on, right? Imagine flexible, and that was in that card here. They're in the process of becoming more flexible. Alega, by the book, come to the edge again, round and round. They want to stop a cycle. No place like home. A change in the wind. They don't really see what they have to offer you but they know you guys are really connected. So there's part of them that is like, the, tra the traumatized part of them is ever vigilant on what could happen. And when we have the, that fear um, it's like we're either looking back or we're looking forward and we can't really be like in the moment and I feel like this is the lesson that they're trying to be taught here not sure why that's coming through um, the lesson is around trust and that the present moment is always like perfect and the illusions are that wow this is complicated a little scenario they're giving me here So depression has to deal with like looking back into the past and anxiety has to deal with looking into the future. And they're saying like the present moment is always perfect for what you need right now. Like that spring of water, right? Like the person that's looking to the past could be like project all sorts of things onto the spring of water. And now I kind of see why they gave me like an inanimate object or, or something like that. Like not a person, but like, so the spring of water, if you're too caught in the past, you're, you can 
project all the fears that you have coming back onto the past, like from the past onto the water. Uh, the water could demand, I take off my mask and then it hurts me. The water could demand all of these things so I can have it, right? So I can have its nourishment. And the future, if you're stuck looking at that, it could be like all of your fears about, I mean, it is past too, because all you really know are the past, but it's like somebody could charge me money for the water. Somebody could manipulate me to like get me hooked on the water and then extract things from me and the water could go away or the water could belong to somebody else, right? These are analogies for relationship things, but I can see that in the present moment, it's the universe, you're, you're learning to trust that the universe is providing you exactly the right saying like concoction like like it's a mad scientist can giving you the exact right mixture of what you need now and to like go to the next step why do i feel so lost i cry at night s with you why do i deserve someone with like you you are too nice i don't deserve your kindness will this pain ever stop I wish I could be a different person. Life without you is hopeless, dark, depressing. I miss your light. Yes, he misses your light. And that's what I'm talking about. It's like... Okay, I'm going to get to that. You are so different from everyone around me. <coughs> and then there's desire under that. Very strong physical desire. And that's part of it. That aura I'm talking about being in around you. There's an aura to you of, it's like when you're in the warmth, a warm day of sunlight, and I'm not necessarily talking about like in the sun, but it's like the warmth envelops you. It's the same with the cold, right? It kind of affects everything that you're doing in every way you feel it's like you could be having a great day but you're still really cold you could be having a bad day but you're still really cold and there's this this warmth with you that you can't really explain and so they're bringing up the fact that your masculine may be very rebellious it may be very alternative or have a lot of vices or issues or problems or whatever however he is um, but part of that is this codependency and they're bringing back the water again it's like he hasn't yet figured out that he is like his own source of water, right? I want you, but I shouldn't. So he is in this process. I want to be more than friends with someone. He is in this process of claiming this self-love and independence, which means you're in that process. I am not ready in reverse. You found out something about me. They are not you. I find you interesting. I can't get over you. You're on my mind the most. See, there's that card. You scare me. I never met anyone like you before in reverse. Well, he feels like he met himself. He feels like he met himself. And that's especially true in the physical aspect. Like, I can't really get into that, but it's like physically... It's most intense when you guys are at your closest physically, okay? And for whatever reason, for him, that is a sign. Karmic relationship in reverse. Love, soulmates, coffin, keys on a ring, golden mirror, paradise. I like you. 
prediction, hand of cards, healthy choices. I really wish the karmic card would just go away. Um, I do feel like he's in the process of leaving this, the karmic relationships behind, but that is a process. And I actually feel like the snake card was about to come out I actually feel like for those that have a karmic <sighs> I really don't like karmic readings at all she may actually try to be manipulating the like twin flame journey to her benefit somehow Like she may be trying to make you the karmic or something like that or paint you in a really bad light. I can see there's some strategy here. So I'm not really one that's big on like tests from the universe. I don't really believe in that. Um, let me get a few more cards before I go down that rabbit hole. You know, the masculines are very susceptible to the karmic energy for a lot of reasons. Um, and it is a difficult thing to, to, uh, to deal with. Wow, I did not expect all that. She may even be like faking a pregnancy or be pregnant, but I don't really get that it's actual, like a legitimate. <clears throat> Feel very strongly is trying to move on from the karmic influences in his life. And that process is learning to trust that inner water, right? That inner emotional place which has always been such a, like a battlefield for him and that requires really tapping into your intuition and, and understanding it and trusting it and this this series did end with a divorce card if that's applicable to you guys um there was also pregnancy in there like I said, I don't really think that that is the actual truth or most. So <clears throat> this card is interesting because I didn't really notice till now that it, it, it actually kind of is like the water in the desert kind of going away and dealing with the sadness and loss of emotions and then also that physical closeness that I was talking about and there is a lot of angelic kind of pushing you guys together I see that here um like your right now fearlessness is being rewarded is what this badger card says to me and that you are going you know you're looking like straight ahead he's looking at you spirit is trying to show him a bigger picture both of you actually and you're kind of right on the same level so let's see what's going on here you're going through this huge transformation. Oh, it's a beautiful card. I really haven't used this deck much at all. He is being like, and look at that. It's really the sacral chakra. And that, all that volcano stuff that I was talking about the other day, it's right there too. He is just being like purged from <laughs> and look at it. Go with the flow. 
So on the bottom of the deck is this very beautiful abundance card with these rainbows, the sun and the moon, and playfulness under that with trust in reverse. So I do think there's a huge huge um it's 25 25 when I looked at the clock. Um huge lessons in trust right now and you're trusting your movement forward will be rewarded. Now it may not be the reward that you are thinking it will be. Um, they want to add that caveat for some reason is that you may have to go to an edge here that I really feel like this is Valentine's Day or around there. Um, it's just things are not necessarily going to go the way you necessarily think they're going to go it's not like oh the road is open and now you can just go down it there still is a few little twists and turns here for sure um I think that the masculine's really, really worried that he doesn't have what it takes. And, you know, this little baby bear is struggling to get up on the mother bear here. I think he has some struggles in facing these things still. He has some challenges despite him being different or unusual there still is a lot of programming that he needs to overcome and it will take time for him to let go of some of the things. So please be patient a little longer. He has fears and he has wounds that, I mean, aren't we all sick of hearing about it? Yes, we are because we all have our own wounds. We all have to deal with them and I do see a desire for forward movement that seems to be coming from a very spiritual place. And <clears throat> of course, when we wake up to our spiritual nature, Sometimes we look back and we think, oh my gosh, you know, I hurt people. I hurt myself, but I also hurt people. And it's a hard thing to face sometimes, you know, especially when our desire was always to be good. Um, the ego wants us to be right and it wants us to be perfect and it wants us to get all the love we can and all the attention we can and he's learning to kind of not do that particular thing um and i feel that really strongly in the collective but it's a very hard habit to break right those of us that have been on the spiritual path it requires a period of being alone most of the time. And I don't mean like a little bit, I mean like a lot, really alone and really making your own decisions for yourself without anyone helping you. And spirit kind of brings that in for you. You know, that's, that's the 12 house energy. It's like, you are going to be alone and you're going to face your codependency and you're going to learn that you're okay on your own. And it's like, I feel like some of you have been through that already. There's resistance here to that particular thing for some reason. I feel like <clears throat> there's such strong programming. And so what they're wanting me to bring up is that 
I'm sorry, my I'm not feeling that great today. Um, the one I need to bring up that we are in like the final day <laughs> or two of Pluto moving from Capricorn to Aquarius. <clears throat> there will be a retrograde later this year, but that is such a power. It's such a powerful shift. It's like going from the collective to the individual and not just the individual. It's like the individual with like a huge parade behind it, right? And that's sort of like defeats the purpose of the individual, but it is like you being you in all your fearless and bold glory. You being you in a way that is unapologetically authentic. And we're all getting there, right? That's where we're headed. Um, so let's take a few of these. I haven't used these in a long time. Um, it's really interesting here. I, I mean, these cards, it's all female energy except for this person and this person here. And they're really talking about the rewriting of the family unit in a lot of ways <clears throat> and the paradigm structure that we are used to having is going to change or has been changing <clears throat> support came in reverse wants and needs in reverse boundless love these are all the things he's dealing with rest depth receiving compassion it does take a lot of compassion for yourself to receive to ask for what you actually need and to be vulnerable enough to get it you know The masculine energy has for a very long time been like, <clears throat> no, we'll provide, but <gasps> in exchange, we're basically going to do whatever we want. We're going to have no like emotional responsibility. We're not going to be in touch with ourselves. We're just going to kind of run rampant and let our shadow take over when we you know, I'm talking about the dark side of the masculine energy. <clears throat> so, I'm really sorry about my throat. Let's get advice here. I do think that they are, um, being... calculated in a way I don't know they're used to putting up a front and not being entirely honest like I keep seeing Kali and she's come out in a lot of readings lately she's a very very strong powerful feminine energy of facing fears And that last degree of Capricorn, you know, it will purge a lot of fears. And Pluto energy is about transformation. So we are in this process of, look at that, a conflict of love, um, transmuting these very deep dark fears around being lovable having self-love um because the process of that is the pendulum swinging from being a people pleaser over to narcissism and those two things are in shame and that's why they're attractive to each other 
And so you have to kind of integrate the polarity, right? You have to go from, I will give up my selflessness. You know, I'll give up myself in order to please you. So you give me what I need instead of, I'm just going to take what I need because I'm the most important person here. And we're dealing, you can see in the collective, we are dealing with those topics. We are dealing with the feminine has willingly kind of given up all of her fearlessness and boldness and the masculine has taken it, but he's given up his service, basically his emotional connection in a lot of ways. Now, this isn't true for every single person and it's only kind of if you've dealt with that. Um, you know, they are just, they are connected. And I did a video on this like a couple days ago and I haven't posted it yet, but it's like the, the empath slash people pleaser, it's the same thing in this context, will always attract the narcissist because that's the vibration they're both in. They're both in shame um, of self and they don't have, you know, and I was, I, I've been in that and I'm in the process of letting that go. Um, because the people pleaser gives up self and the narcissist makes the self too big and too important. And they're both afraid, of, they're both in the shame vibration, of afraid to be who they really are and ask for what they really want and feel like they deserve it just because of who they are. And that's really what this reading has been about. And you can see now my throat's been clearing. Okay, so let's get advice. Okay, we'll do three piles. So the black dragon, which is a very Saturnian energy to me. There is a Saturn dragon in here, but um, cocoons you. Did I not say that they are definitely, uh, this is definitely for the masculine, so that your divine potential grows. Meditate, reflect, undergo a metamorphosis. And then the Lochak Higher Learning, you have learned from experience. More inner study is required to further progress. And these are energies you can call in when you meditate, sleep, shower, walk, or you can just ask that they work with your energy and attune you to them. Opal Joy, which is for the October Libras. <clears throat> I'm also gonna get, imagine all unwanted thoughts dissolving into light, creating room for new opportunities and possibilities for your life. I'm gonna get one of these. I've been working with these Dorian Virtue cards for the first time and I kind of like them sometimes. They're different. So we'll get kind of a signifier for each pile. Uh, Yamaya. Golden Opportunity, that's the ocean. Bridget, that's um, Divine Feminine. And Ishtar, Boundaries. And then on the bottom of the deck is the very powerful Hathor. Receptivity, allow yourself to receive. This will increase your intuition, energy, and ability to give to others. So that's a feminine aspect. So Yemaya is one. Bridget is, I'll just put these on there. Two, and Ishtar is three. We have the Super Seven, the Rose Quartz, and the Blue Tiger's Eye. So yummy on. Number one, important doors are opening for you right now. Walk through them. If you're drawn to dolphins, mermaids, Atlantis, this is probably your pile. We have Source Dragon. Source Dragon hasn't come out for a while. Very, very powerful energy here. I do feel like this is probably my pile. Source energy attunes you to the infinite. Be still in the silence. Magic can happen. Be in the moment. Diana, focused intention. Think about what you desire. Set your sights high. Expect best possible outcome. Brazilianite, flexibility. So we did have two cards of flexibility. They're really asking us to be flexible right now with the way things are structured. Like, 
we're moving into a time where things are going to be a little bit more like nebulous, a little bit more flow. And then romance, Cupid's arrow strikes. I do think for some that there will be a physical coming back together. I feel it very strongly on the masculine side that there's something that they can't hold back anymore. And it's that need to revisit that connection in particular. Like, am I remembering it more intense than it was? Am I remembering it correctly? Is it still there? That physical connection feels like there's been a period of time or it never came into fruition the way that they wanted it to, that it laid kind of languishing. All right, Bridget, don't back down. Stand up for what you believe is right. We have the earth and air dragon represents a perfect balance of heaven and earth. Stay balanced, ground your visions, manifest your hopes and dreams. Dewal cool, Dewal cool, Dharma unfolding. Remember that you are on a path. Take one step at a time to happiness. And that's really what I was talking about with like the present. You don't need to construct like the whole bridge right now. You just need to take your next step on your path and, tr and learn to trust it. Kunze, self-love. I love, love, love this stone for twins. It's one, I think, one of the most powerful stones to work with for self-love. My beloved, um, and I think I have, yeah, I have some right here. I find it to just to be a magical stone. I really had never worked with it before, but I absolutely love its frequency. Though we may be physically apart, spiritually we are always united for love transcends space and time and nothing is missing. And then Ishtar, boundaries. Love yourself enough to say no to others. Demands on your time and energy. So that's that recovery from people pleasing. Deep Blue Dragon. Keeps you safe by clearing your pathway. Trust that you are protected. Walk on a path of light. Mary Magdalene. Teacher awakens. You have something important to share Follow the inner call. Don't let anything stop you. That's that boundless, fearless energy. Labradorite, take action and only time will tell. So I feel like this pile, you are resetting your boundaries. And it's very important because we are on a journey to unconditional love, but we need to have boundaries along the way. So when you get there, when you can just love everyone and everything and have 100% total trust for the universe, you know, that's an enlightened state of being. We are on this journey. My understanding is that we are being asked to get to that, the five, around the 540 mark, um, which is like where the saints fall. And that is unconditional love and the ability to have complete trust in the moment. Now, we aren't all gurus, you know, living without financial responsibilities, children, marriages, ex-partners, houses, jobs. You know, we are in this incarnation living with all of these complicated things. And so there is boundaries that have and prioritization and all of these things that have to be accounted for. Um, and this doorway that's opening, this portal that's opening is to kind of this new golden age. I mean, we are at the very beginning of it. And, you know, in the short term, I think it will take 20 years. In the long term, I think what I've read most about is that it will take 23,000 years. So this isn't you finding your purpose and changing your whole life in the next six months, unless that's what you're actually called to do. So get really, really good at setting your boundaries and loving yourself enough to know that you are in control of your life and you do have these contracts with people in your life and structures, but that doesn't mean that you have to give up your entire self, right? You need to honor your life and your well-being and your livelihood, but also your path forward 
and that path forward only unfolds in the now. Okay, so that was a very long explanation. <laughs> they wanted me to say that. So I thank you so much for liking, sharing, subscribing. My readings are open right now, both on my stand store, which is a three hour turnaround. I'm still kind of working with that, <laughs> but I'm getting there. Um, um, it's not a perfect technology, I'll say that much. And um, on my Etsy, I think I have two available right now on my Etsy because they sold really fast. So thank you for supporting this video. And I so love bringing you these messages and I really hope that they help you and um, on your journey forward. Bye for now.